Welcome back to Orthodox Coin Eat Beach. We are here with a special breaking news. On May 2nd, in Zimbabwe, we saw Metropolitan Serafim of Zimbabwe ordaining a deaconess by her name Angelica Molan from Harare, Zimbabwe. And this has already started to be a big debate in the Orthodox world. And as we have already done once about uh, deaconess, the revival of deaconess and the aims behind it done by a few groups, we like to have a quick response on this particular incident that happened on 2nd of May. For the same, we are here with our chairman, Dr. John, who has already explained a lot to the Orthodox world about the reality behind this idea and the reality behind the revival of this particular position in the ecclesiastical order of the Holy Church. Let's hear from Dr. John. So my first question is, uh, is this something uh, that is going to be historical? Like in some sense, they are, the, uh, as you have seen around uh, social media, they have named this as historical move. And they said that it's going to be just a start to something that is going to come uh, better in future. That's what they say. What's your opinion on this? Yes, I believe uh, this is historical and it will be looked at, but uh, all of history is not always positive. All of history is not always positive. And um, I have really grave concerns, as I've expressed in the past, about the whole contemporary movement of the deaconesses, the way they want to revive it, the office. And as I said in the past at length um, and explained at length that Historically, that is not what the deaconess, what they were proposing was not what the deaconesses actually did or functioned or were viewed as in the early centuries. Now, that was that's a big matter of debate because the other side says, oh, yes, they were. Well, now we're at a different level beyond theory. We're in, in history and archaeologizing. Now we're into a reality of practice. And I believe that in understanding what's happened, everything I've read um, officially from the parties involved, the deaconess herself, that she now, she was ordained as a male deacon, would have been, well, yesterday, ironically, of all weeks of Holy Week, Orthodox Holy Week on Holy Thursday, the day we commemorate these, the institution of the mystical supper, the Eucharist, that she was ordained as a deacon with full sacramental, liturgical, and pastoral ministerial functions, faculties. And it's kind of mind boggling and we've, and, and I'm sure you could post the pictures up uh, later. So uh, Don George is that uh, the pictures that show that she's giving petitions as a, as a deacon would out on the front of the Conestacion. She's um, uh, communing people from the chalice with the spoon. Um, what this means only time will tell. But what this means even beyond that is what what does, is this saying now? This is a new, as I, I pointed out in the past, this would be a new practice. Well, now we've seen it a, a day into it. This is a new practice. But the fact that it was done unilaterally within the patriarchate, at least as far as we know, nobody else was consulted of the autocephalous church hierarchs. The fact that it was done unilaterally within the Patriarchate of Alexandria in all Africa by the Patriarch of Alexandria with his Synod of Bishops of Africa um, and done in Africa and, or, and, and the, ordin the, the woman ordained was an African, is an African woman, a married woman too, so she's not even a monastic in that regard, as I understand it. Uh, she and now, now, she well, not only the, the deaconess, but 
now that whole patriarchate of Alexandria after Holy Week, because I don't think anyone do anything during these these days. But after Holy Week, there's I think there's going to be ramifications from the other churches, either a suspension of communion with the Patriarchate of Alexandria or because this was done unilaterally within the Patriarchate of Alexandria. Now, they, they can argue, well, that's within their their rights as an autocephalous church. But as we said in the past, I mean, the unity that the Orthodox churches have, whether Eastern or Oriental, is based on the unity of faith. We don't, it's not like Rome where there's a magisterium headed by the Bishop of Rome, the pontiff, the Pope, the Roman pontiff. We go by having a, the a unity of shared faith and the, the, the consensus, uh, when, especially on, on matters of doctrine, and this would be a doctrinal matter, first rank of the priesthood is the diaconate. I think that, um, you know, we're already fractious as it is and, and, and prone to schisms schismatically prone, if you will, within Orthodox, and we see all the schisms that have been here in recent years and continue now, that I, I don't think this this was, this was is going to be good across the board for Orthodoxy. Now, the proponents say, well, this was a, a right step for feminists, you know, for women's uh, rights agenda. But, but, but on an ecclesiological level, whether that's, do you want to agree with that or not, or accepts it or not, it's almost peripheral to what the ecclesiological implications are. And I think that overall they will be devastating. Do you said about uh, uh, post-civil ecclesiastical uh, tassels that's going to happen in coming days? My question goes again uh, to particular uh, synod of Alexandria, who is said to give the consent and as the bishop reports from Zimbabwe, he sees that we have done this with the approval of the synod. So my question is, have you seen any such approval given by uh, Patriarchate of Alexandria, Greek Orthodox Patriarchate of Alexandria for the same? Uh, the only thing that we know was uh, Alexand Patriarchate of Alexandria has uh, ordained few a uh, 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 few acolytes like um, local uh, sub -deacons. Sub -deacons. sub deacons who were monks monastics yes they were monastics but in this case uh, this particular person is not a not a monast so my question is was there any such circular or was there any such a synodal decree that was given out by Greek Orthodox Patriarchate of Alexandria. And the other thing is like the Metropolitan of Sim, uh, Metropolitan of uh, Zimbabwe goes even to an extent where he sees that we have done this on this particular special day. Um, of course, that's so special for our Orthodox Church as it's the, the Holy Thursday, the greatest Holy Thursday where the the where he became the bread and wine for us so he says that we have selected this particular day to make this as an historical significant significance what's your thought on these two points well no i have not seen any official decree i'm sure there was one uh, i just haven't seen it i looked on on the patriarchate of alexander's website i didn't find it but um from everything that was said by obviously Bishop, the Bishop of Zimbabwe would not have, Metropolitan of Zimbabwe would not have done this if he didn't have the okay of the Patriarch of Alexandria. And for, by, by the words of herself in writing of, um, of the nun or of the nun, I'm sorry, of the new deaconess, who's not a nun. Um, this was by unanimous decree of the Senate. So all of, I haven't, but I have, those are second hand, and those are peripheral and those are uh, circumstantial because obviously this happened and I don't, I, 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 if it weren't approved, it's not just somebody with a Bishop of Zimbabwe wanted to do this and decided to do this, but he obviously, he got this of this magnitude approved by the Patriarch and the Senate. So, but as far as any written 
thing uh, oh, that has been publicly posted. I have not seen that. So no written decree that I've seen. I mean, I'm sure it exists. I would imagine it exists, but I've not seen it. Um, as to Holy Thursday, I mean, they didn't pick an obscure day, that's for sure. I don't know what to say about it. I mean, the, the, next to Pascha night itself, Holy Thursday is probably the most, if we're going to rank them, the most significant divine liturgy in second place, if you will, of the entire year. Holy Thursday, the, the day that we commemorate the institution of the Eucharist, where he, where the Lord said, this is my body, this is my blood, where we're, we actually partake of his body and blood. And he tells us that in the elements of bread and wine. To select that particular day uh, because of its uh, significance to the central mystery of our church is of the ecclesia of the church being the Eucharist. Um, I, I, like I said, that that's as, that's as um, high profile as things can get. He didn't uh, for sure. I don't even know what to say about it. Uh, he didn't, it wasn't, he didn't pick an obscure day. Oh, and as this is a short one, just a last question, a Q question. What do you expect from the the believers of the Greek Orthodox Church around the world? Do you believe that they will be supporting this particular act? Maybe we will may see some more support from America where the things was already going on to this particular line. Uh, but my question is about uh, recently Greek was suffering from a legislative uh, law that was built by its parliament where it says that even the gay marriage and everything is possible in Greece. So where is the witness? Where is the church? And where is our traditional ecclesiastical orders? Well, I, I think a lot of times people don't know what they don't know. And our people, our parishioners aren't any different than anybody else in that regard. So I think you're going to have, they're gonna, it's going to be politicized and people are going to have, half the people are going to be for it for a variety of reasons that aren't theological per se. Other half will be against it. Uh, I think the real factor is going to be is, well, are these people going to stay in the church if this becomes widespread? And even more to the forefront at the beginning, whether in, it's in Europe or here, let alone in Asia, the question becomes, well, if the African people accept this, then that's going to be the paradigm. Obviously, the African people are accepting this. We're not here. I, don't, I haven't heard any protests about this. And granted, it's Holy Week. But um, that's that's the other thing. I think the, the real issue will be what will the hierarchy of the other Orthodox autocephalous national churches, the other jurisdictions, what are they going to, how are they going to respond? Are they going to suspend communion with Patriarch of Alexandria in all Africa? Or are they going to continue? Or, and what does this mean? What, what, what happens when Deacon Angelique, Deaconess Angelique comes to the United States? Is she going to be allowed to serve in the churches? I mean, I, I, just the implications of all of this, I don't think this was well thought through. And, and basically, we're going to end up with unabated, even though we believe that the Holy Spirit protects the church and one holy Catholic and apostolic church, despite our fractiousness as Orthodox churches, national churches, East, whether it's Eastern Orthodox or Oriental Orthodox. I think... Uh, that we're in for a difficult time because um, this will this will add more to more of the tensions that that already exist. We we hang by a thin line these days, as we know, with our unity, and 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 to have something like this happen for the first rank of the priesthood, which the diaconate is, uh, this is th th this challenges. It's just not about one particular person in one particular place, you know a deaconess in Africa. This is about ecclesiology and, and how do we function as the Orthodox churches being in communion with one another and because we maintain the unity of faith. Now, you know, we're, we're, we're headed to becoming uh, the Byzantine right version of Anglicanism where you have different 
uh, before they blew up and splintered even further the Episcopal Church and, and the Angli continuing Anglican churches here in North America. The irony is, in all of Christendom, regardless of faith tradition, denominations, whatever you want to call them, the churches, Africa was always held to be the most conservative. It was always Africa that was saying, well, the rest of the world's gone more left the faith. You know, they were more traditionalist on, on a variety of issues. And here in Africa, this is the exact place that this has happened. So this is a really a paradigm shift and, a, a, and a, an earth shaker, I believe. So time will tell how this will all shake out. As you just mentioned about Anglican Church, I was just thinking about the Catholic Church who recently started up with the, a short discussion on Deaconess and then um, we drove from it. Even we saw it from the Pope of Etienne. Well, where... That's not over. You know, it's good you mentioned that, Don George. I think, given Rome's position on a variety of matters, I think they're going to say, well, if the Greek Orthodox could do this in Africa, we can do this everywhere else. So I wouldn't be surprised that we'd be hearing about the first uh, Roman Catholic deaconess being ordained with full faculty. Yeah, of course, up to, up to, up to this, they were uh, barring it uh, by telling that this is the first step to uh, the presbytery or the clergy. Even we used to see this. And it, we were... Still say, we still say... We still it's, it's, we, now it's been we, we, seeing, we are still seeing and we are here to say the same. But when it comes to the whole world, even we have seen that this particular deaconess who was ordained last day is also part of World Council of Churches who empowers the ecumenism between the churches. And there, there was only one church who was, uh, or one tradition which was uh, really doing this and we are going to see another tradition who is starting over with it. And on the other side, still we ha know a lot of uh, division differences and divisions are there in uh, Africa, and already the patriarchal exarchate of Russia was already installed. And as I was reading last day, uh, a few of the priests or deacons who are uh, who are part of pa patriarchal exarchate of Russia was responding to this in a way that we don't have to respond to this. This is already against the church, uh, and we don't have to discuss about it. And this can't be happened in our Orthodox tradition. So that was the responses that I saw uh, from a person who was recently uh, studying his theology in Moscow. Uh, so these type of responses are already coming from uh, Africa. Um, and and yeah, as you said, it's, n it's just a one day has only passed. And as they have done this in the Holy Week, that has really made the responses a little bit more late. And I hope that a bag of responses will be here after the Pascha. And as uh, in every year we uh, we celebrate Pascha with a um, with a forward vision of a good days which is coming over um, as he has risen. But now uh, I don't believe that it will be really smooth to say that Christ is risen and indeed he is risen again uh, with these type of people who really try to stand away from the ecclesi ecclesiastical order that was given by the by, by the Lord, by the God and by the church fathers who really cared and who has really debated a lot about this. And uh, I hope this particular QC section was really useful to you and we will be following up with this particular news or development that's coming from africa particularly from uh, uh zimbabwe and still we uh, we are doubtful in many things whether the ordination press was taken be uh, like be uh, before the iconostat or i mean inside the inside the throne inside on the holy altar so these type of doubts are still there. And what type of prayer was said by Metropolitan of Zimbabwe? So I don't, I don't think this will come. This will not. This debate will not end soon. This will be ongoing. And if 
the bishop of zimbabwe has uh, more ideas let's see whether he is going to order more on the day of pascha by telling that this is an another history let's see and thank you uh, dr john for giving this quick uh, quick response to this and before our wind up do you have any uh, any last concluding message or any last concluding suggestion for our viewers uh, on this particular issue well you know i would say in the life of 2000 years of the church and even when you look in the old testament the times of jesus and the time of jesus and you, and you look in the old testament church history is messy and we've had you know we've had different things happen in churches where the the arians those who denied the divinity of christ they were in power and what not and what i'm trying to say is do not fear have hope and 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 the message as you alluded to earlier don george is christ is risen and with that reality like the apostle paul teaches there's nothing for us to fear we can't even we don't even need to fear death itself because christ has defeated that so especially during this weekend when we celebrate pascha that's the message we don't need to be in, uh, afraid we don't need to be and uh, uncertain we don't need to be in bondage to fear because Christ is risen and that changes everything thank you thank you for that concluding note and we hope to see you again with these type of quick breaking our uh, reactions uh, on our orthodox equity beast thank you for tuning in uh, to our channel again thank you see you all soon